awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. You guys are awesome. No, you're awesome. No, you are awesome. Sir, you are awesome. Seriously. Awesome. 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 Everything is awesome. Welcome to this week's edition of Everything is Awesome. I'm your host, Kev, and this is a show where we sit down and talk to awesome people about awesome things. And this is part two of our conversation with the boys from Dissecting the 80s. Uh, great conversation. We finish it up strong, talking about what I love to talk about, and that's comic books. So I hope you enjoy uh, listening to the rest of the boys talk about how they do their podcast and just the general muckery that we talk about. Also, uh, I want to, you know, we don't haven't reminded people in quite some time to leave us an iTunes review, you know? Uh, I want to say it in this episode with the boys, but uh, yeah, go to iTunes, subscribe to our podcast, and make sure you leave us a five-star review. It's a great way, an easy way, to support this show and get it in front of more eyes, more ears, and just have more people listening to us so we can do more cool things like the Philly Podcast Fest, which is happening again this weekend um, on the 20. 7th and 28th of August 2016. Uh, it's the second weekend that it's happening at Tattooed Mom on South Street. Dissecting of the 80s will be there. It's going to be a good time. Go hang out. If you like podcasts, I highly recommend it. Uh, we were there last week. It was so much fun uh, that that we're going to be able to share with you guys. Um, I'm hoping to have the audio in time to air it on uh, Wednesday the 31st of August, uh, which is our next show, episode 33, I believe. And then... Um, uh, and then we're also going to video for that, so that's cool. I'm hoping that we have all that ready for the 31st. Uh, other than that, the only other thing I want to talk about is International Podcast Day. It's September 30th this year. Um, I th- we're still figuring out what we want to do for it um, with Everything is Awesome. Uh, if you have ideas, tweet at me, either um, at HHWST on Twitter or tweet the show at Real Awesome Pod. Um, but I'm thinking I want to get... Um, non no, I'm thinking I want to get non-podcasters involved somehow. Um, so uh, stay tuned next week, uh, or probably pro- probably the week after that. Probably the first week in September, um, we'll start really concentrating on International Podcast Day 2016. Anyway, let's get to it. You're here to listen to the rest of my conversation with Andrew and Trip from Dissecting the 80s, right here only on AwesomePodcast.com. We haven't done really guests, and I have like tried to backdoor into them because like I still do a little bit of reporting on the side but it would be imp- we would have to do like a segment with somebody because the way we do a movie no person in their right mind is like oh yeah i'll sit with you for two hours while we talk about the movie in excruciating detail and you make fun of the way my hair looks yeah that sounds <laughs> awesome although i i would for if if we got leah thompson i would say nothing bad about her <laughs> You're right, but we already have. That's the problem. No, we, like, we, did, we said nothing bad about Leah Thompson. We made fun of her hair for like an hour in Howard the Duck. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, where were you making fun of her in? But Howard the Duck, I get it. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, it, we didn't make fun of her in Back to the Future, but we certainly made fun of like how Back to the Future 2 treats her as a character where they're like, oh shit, there's a girl in this movie. Can we just <laughs> knock her unconscious for the, for the whole thing? And then I kept making uh, Zemeckis jokes. And then Trip was like, is, <laughs> was like, is there something about Zemeckis that I missed? So, so, um, wh- 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 how, what's your process? This is uh, something I don't get into as often as I want to when I talk to other podcasters. Um, what's the, and especially because you guys are remote from one another, uh, and I, we've already heard, or at least I heard, uh, that, um, you do will record when you guys meet up for whatever reasons when you, for family visits or whatnot, How, what's the process for recording like for you guys? Uh, last minute on my part. <laughs> <laughs> I usually watch about two hours before we record to 30 minutes before we record. <laughs> um, and we'll s- usually Skype in and record separately and then I'll s- or like separate files and then I'll email it to him. Mm. Um, but for the most part, Trip picks a lot of the stuff just because I'm a very busy person. And I'm like, I'll watch, put something in front of me and I'll watch it and have opinions about it and make stupid jokes. But yeah, we like it, it, it was like a come to Jesus conversation in the first three, four months where I was like, I need to have roles defined here because I'm getting frustrated at you not doing these things. And I, it was eventually just like, Trip, just pick the stuff. I will occasionally suggest ideas, put them in the pile, but like you, if you do that, that's fine. Like I don't need to be part of that. Pro- and this is Andrew saying like, I don't need to be part of that process. And so I just like, I've made a schedule and I'll research what's coming out. And so, uh, 
we recently had one where, you know, the new Ghostbusters movie came out and I was like, we're a hundred percent doing an episode about Ghostbusters too. Like there's a 0% chance we're not doing that. So let me look at the way our schedule lines up and like, what's the best date to release our episode to sync up so we can try to get a little bit of, you know, we're all doing this so people can hear our stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's do it around a time when people are going to be searching Ghostbusters. So like maybe someone clicks on us by mistake. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And like occasionally I'll suggest that like, I'm like, can we do an episode on the Golden Girls and Murder, She Wrote and Gem and the Holograms? <laughs> like, Gem's a perfect example where that was one where Andrew was like, I really want to do an episode about Gem and the Holograms. And then I was like, all right. And as I'm researching, it's like, oh, they're remaking that and do a movie? All right. Well, there's the hook. And so we do it that way. But we'll also come up with, like, we've come up with some dumb themes that have become stuff that I look forward to. Uh, for our, our birthdays are both in February. Mm-hmm. And the first year we were doing the show... I was I was dying to show him Star Trek Four and uh, we love Jaws, so Jaws Four was natural. What was the other one that year? Rocky Four. Rocky Four, and he had never seen either Rocky Four or Star Trek Four, and I was like, I cannot wait to show you Rocky Four and Star Trek Four. Like this is so exciting for me. So that turned into February, which is oh, okay. every every February we do part four sequels, and okay. so we didn't realize at the time that the two best for our show part four sequels were Rocky four and Star Trek four <laughs> and, and then Jaws four. <laughs> we went <laughs> right through them. Uh, so this year on February, we did Amityville horror part four, which is about the Amityville horror possessing a lamp, mm-hmm. like a, like a floor lamp. Okay. <laughs> with a globe with a face in it. Um, <laughs> that like that's, awful. that's a real movie it's that people horrible. have made. <laughs> people spent money and like worked on that movie. And that's what it's about. Um, well, that had to be a direct to video. Like, there's no way that was, was in theater. It was made for TV, but then after it, another Amityville horror movie came out in theaters. So, like, they they went back. They were able to cut. Like, they recovered enough to come back out. But we're we're kind of lucky with our era in that it's reboot, resequel, yeah, whatever yeah, city. Yeah. Now. Like, you know, one day we'll probably do a Temple of Doom episode, and it's like, oh, we'll, we'll just wait till they put out that Indiana Jones Five movie that everyone's gonna hate. Yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> so so did have you guys done indie four for for no because it didn't come out in the eighties we only oh, do okay. stuff between nineteen eighty 1980 and nineteen eighty nine so oh, we, okay we, so uh, a a it's like, gonna be a four in the eighties yeah I'm sorry so the one time we broke the format was on leap day <laughs> was for me yeah. <laughs> so Andrew had been making like for the whole there was a running joke for like a year every time we would talk about Swayze or every like oh, it would yeah. just come up all over the place that he'd be like uh, I just wish I was watching Ghost and it always made me laugh really hard and my rule of thumb on the show is like if it makes me laugh that's good enough yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I just like I try to make I try to do things to make myself laugh or make him laugh or vice versa you know hope that he makes me laugh and I'm like I the, we'll go on tangents sometimes that like seem like they're going nowhere and then he'll kill me with a joke where I'm just like crying and I'm like that whole tangent staying in because that joke's funny to me and I don't care so that's that's part of it too that and, well, and I mean so for for me uh back in the day podcasting was all about numbers and what the audience wanted and all, all this that, and that and uh, again, I think being a more mature person and being in my thirties and just kind of realizing that like, Hey, I'm not going to make money off of this. Uh, I, I realized that like, I need to do it for me and like numbers became way less uh, important to me. And like, obviously this show usually because it's not necessarily a straight, uh, Q and a interview show, it's more conversation. There's a, it's, it's very Kevin Smith, uh, an evening with esque where a lot of the same stories are told because you know it's just part of the natural conversation that i have with somebody because we're gonna somehow get to podcasting we're gonna somehow get to wrestling we're gonna somehow get to this tabletop story so um i barely like i not that the audience doesn't matter because trust me they do uh and i appreciate everyone that listens to the show and and if someone writes in and says stop telling that story i'll probably stop telling it but (laughs) Um, until then I'm going to tell the same stories and I, I do, I, I just, I enjoy if it makes me laugh, um, or it makes my guests laugh. Like I'm all right. All right. Well, like, that's good. Like, I know that this is a, a, a good theme that I'm doing and I, and people keep saying yes to doing the show. So obviously I'm doing something right. But as long as it makes me smile when I do it, like, that's all I care about now in podcasting. Yeah. I mean, if we ask for it every week, we have yet for it to really become a thing, but like if 
I would love to get to a point where we have enough people chiming in with responses that we do like listener request month. That would make my life, you know, to get to get to where we could do yeah. that. So we're, we're we have had people suggest stuff and I put it in the pile and like Dirty Dancing was one people had asked us to do. And I was like, we're going to do that. But at the, at the time has to be right. And the time being right was, oh, we have a live show. Let's do something that people have heard of because we a lot of times we're trolling and stuff that no one knows what the hell we're talking about. So you know, yeah, when like you're talking straight about, up, what the hell are you guys talking about? Yeah, like I'm pretty sure we're two of maybe six people who have seen Parasite 3D, which stars. I'm gonna do it not again. Not Demi Moore. It Courtney is Demi Moore. Cox. <laughs> no, it's Demi Moore, not Courtney Cox. It's not Courtney Cox. <laughs> Damn it! We cannot keep those two people straight collectively. It is bad. <laughs> really, for whatever <laughs> reason, they don't even look that alike. But I was gonna say because to me they're different completely. Yeah, they're they're not at all alike. But I cannot put them apart in my brain. It's, I don't know. It's because in the Parasite movie they look very similar. Oh, okay. But it's like a piece of garbage made in 3D because 3D was a hot trend. Let's just buy like the most expensive thing in the movie is a Lamborghini that clearly they spent a lot of money to rent for like one day and it's awful. Like it's unwatchable garbage. So like we had a good time making fun of it, but nobody knows what the hell you're talking about because nobody has seen Parasite 3D, nor should they. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask, uh, let me ask you if you guys have done this movie and I don't know, maybe it was a nineties movie. I'm not sure. Uh, but it, to me, so what got me, I'm a big fan of watching like, like b-rated horror movies in october for halloween yeah yeah mm-hmm. i'll try to watch like 30 like one for every day of the month never <laughs> happens but i try to watch 30 in the month and i'll try to re- blog about it i think the most i've done is six i have done that same project like eight times yes, yeah there. i've never and mine wasn't even watching i was just gonna recommend a movie to everyone <laughs> i know and i was like i got three and i was like oops sorry Don't. guys I mean, in in this past year, I even opened it up to short films so that I would only have to watch four minute a four minute film, and I still only got six in. Um, But I started doing the same thing for Christmas because the one year I found this horrible B rated Christmas movie, and and I if if you if it's eighties and you guys have done it, I'm gonna listen to it right away. And if you haven't done it, you got to do it. Uh, Santa with muscles. Uh, That's like early 90s the hulk hogan movie yeah oh my god it's so awful oh it's really really bad it's like 90 probably 92 93 okay yeah yeah if we have done we have done uh so we have done hulk hogan we did uh no holds barred we used to support hulk hogan yeah so our the so the original thing when we did that cindy lobber thing is like oh i need cover art and i found this stupid picture of the mega powers hulk hogan and randy savage and it just struck me as funny and I like poorly photoshopped our faces over there. And I was like, isn't this a good dumb joke? <laughs> and, uh, that's why Andrew is the macho man drew because I photoshopped his face over Randy Savage's okay. like two and a half years ago. And I just found that joke funny and I've been beating it into the ground ever since. But, and it's why we have a Photoshop every episode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, I was, I, I was going to say that's the origin there now. Yeah, I know it. yeah. So that's the origin story of our podcast art. But like, you know, six months ago or so, Hulk Hogan came out on this like racist tirade, and it was like, "All right, well, I super don't want my face on that person's for all of our podcasts." So that's when we switched to you know Doc Brown and, and Marty McFly for the you know the face in the hole. Uh, that okay, was okay. that was also like I literally made myself a Hulkamania shirt, like a hand painted Hulkamania. I cut it the way his was cut, and then a week later, it was like Hulk Hogan's a racist asshole, and it was like, "Well, <laughs> great." <laughs> wow. So, so we kept Dissectomania because at that point, like uh, sort of like WrestleMania, you know, whatever, Yeah, yeah, yeah. which, you know, we probably should have changed, but I wasn't about to change the Twitter handle and all that stuff. So Dissectomania, we kept, we definitely distanced ourselves from the racist. It's, it's funny that you say this because I completely forgot about the racist remarks that he made. And uh, I don't know because for us, for me, it hasn't happened. But for everyone listening, it has. My plan was to come out to Hogan's music at the live <laughs> show. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to do that now. Yeah, I, that's, that's exa- like uh, that. It's so universally stupid and great, and it's like, oh, you ruined it because you're a schmuck. And he didn't even do, like, a proper apology tour where we could get over it. Like, he needed to go on, like, the full-on apology circuit of, like, he does 10 interviews, and he seems like he's really sorry, even if we know he's not. Like, you needed to do the thing that celebrities do, and he just did one terrible interview and then moved on from it. 
Oh, I completely forgot about it. I, I, You're so, probably like most people. Like most people probably have forgot at this point. But like, you know, we created a new identity, so we just went with it. Yeah. Plus, I like the Back to the Future more anyways. Well, and I think for me, like that, I think symbolizes. And I guess if you do more than just movies, I'm completely wrong here. But because I just think of you guys as a movies podcast, like that represents, I think, the movies more than than your other picture. Definitely. Yeah. We we did do the mega power match Hulk versus Savage at WrestleMania five as an episode is when we were trying to do stuff. So like we did, we have dabbled. We do a little bit of TV, but it's it's almost always movies. Yeah. Occasionally TV stuff. But I think it's because we have to th- like with a movie we just pick the movie but when we pick a tv show we then have to pick which episode of the tv show we want to watch mm-hmm. and that's like one of the few times ever we got like uh and i say this as one so no it's lovingly but like internet nerd feedback was our episode about magnum pi which we did for pi day because that's a joke <laughs> that made me giggle um <laughs> i'm glad you're on the same wavelength <laughs> oh god Oh, if the if I was drinking, I would have been laughing for twenty minutes straight on that. <laughs> that is such a silly, dumb joke. I like it. Um, but we picked we picked this one because like we were just I was just like there's like two hundred Magnum PI episodes, and so like I just was scrolling for stuff that caught my eye, and the one was like there's a circus and a guy's face is mutilated, and like a girl gets knocked off a trapeze and falls to her death, and I was like, all right, this sounds interesting. <laughs> And it was like a fairly late in the run episode. And so when we put that up. We got a comment from a guy who was like, and I, I can't resist doing the voice. I do apologize because this guy was very nice to us, but just like, uh, excuse me, but you picked a terrible episode of Magnum P.I. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point of the show you're watch, listening to. We watch except except not really, though, because we picked a great episode of the Golden Girls. Well, that's because it was ridiculous. It's a, the Golden Girls did an episode about drug abuse. Like there was no <laughs> other option. <laughs> Oh god, I'm the Golden Girls is one of the f- shows from the '80s that I ha- I have watched, and, th- and that it, it's literally one of my favorite shows. Period. Like no matter what, across the board. It is, well, it is a good show. Like I I I I like it. Or I I mean, at least when I was a kid. I, see, I grew up uh, with uh, my fa- my father worked overnights uh, when I was a kid. So like a lot of times he was at home with me and we, you know, he'd be sleepy. So we'd watch TV. Um, and I grew up like what basically is a Nick and Knight kid. Like I, uh, anything that was a Nick at night, which now is like nineties stuff. And it, I just makes me feel old. But, uh, <laughs> the back then it was stuff like Mary Tyler Moore, Dick Van Dyke, golden girls. Uh, and I, I mean, some of the stuff may not have been on Nick at night, but like the 66 Batman, uh, you know, all that stuff is like, I grew up with old people television. <laughs> and, uh, and love almost all of it. I mean, Golden Girls is legitimately a very funny program still. And you could take a Golden Girl. I said program like I'm some old person. It's a television <laughs> show. It's a, a great program. It's, it's so a great good. story. I love watching it every every Thursday. But like, you could take a Golden Girl script and do some light editing and give it to the people on Big Bang Theory, and it's the same rhythm as a Big Bang Theory episode. Like, I'm not, yeah. I don't I don't like Big Bang Theory. I but, don't know about Big Bang Theory, but I agree that it's but but like traditional three camera sitcom where it's like set up set up punchline set up set up punchline set up set up punchline. Like, you could give it to any of those like three camera shows, and it's it's that they could do that script. And obviously all the jokes about like having gray hair everywhere aren't going to land, but like <laughs> you could give it to them and it would be fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and for me, so I have, I've always been a TV person. So like for, so going back to eighties movies, movies that I've should have watched, uh, like I was 21 when I watched Goonies for the first time. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And, and I mean, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, but I don't have the same like feeling towards it that almost everyone else in the world does, because um, I I mean I I just I was born in '84, uh, so I mean I guess I should have watched those movies. I, I watched like there was one summer where I literally watched nothing back Back to the Future. Like I was more, <laughs> I've always been more just into the first like. One? No, no, I would watch all three. So, like, day, summer day one, Back to the Future. Summer day two, Back to the Future part two. Summer day three, Back to the Future part three. 
day four, repeat the cycle. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't watch them all on the same day because, like, that would, say, that would be so burnout. embarrassing. And I've never done that ever <laughs> no, in my whole life at any no. point ever. <laughs> um, no, uh, I mean, I'm sh- I, I, when I I do that now, <laughs> like I'll sit down and watch three all three of them in a day. But back then, yeah, I, I, I and I should have those mem- movies memorized because of that. But wrestling took it away from me. Or at least <laughs> yeah. that's what I blame. Uh, and so, I, but I was always more into like those type of movies, like the the time travel or superhero type of fantasy stuff. So like Goonies or even um, like, like I've never to this day, and this is going to make me a horrible Philadelphia guy, never watched Rocky. Uh, Neither have I. Oh. Okay, well, so I'm not alone. <laughs> You're not, but also Rocky's a '70s movie. Well, okay, so it's it's you. You got to get into the whole thing of like the pacing is different. Like it's a yeah. very different movie. Like I'm not say, I'm not saying that it's like a, oh I didn't mean that as like oh you dummy that's not our podcast. <laughs> but I mean that as like '70s movies have a very different feel, yeah. and it's like a like at this point watching Rocky, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's going to seem like it's 800 hours long. Well, and I want to watch it for the simple fact of I, I'm not huge into boxing at all. So, like, I, that's the reason I've never watched it. I was like, that, I, there's nothing to sell me on. That's good because Rocky isn't about boxing at all. <laughs> well, then maybe I'll like it. But I mean, I, I, I know you can't say at all. He is a boxer. <laughs> the first Rocky, the first Rocky, like an hour of the movie is about Rocky courting Adrian. <laughs> so, like, boxing like is an underlining theme. Yes, but like the like as they went on, it just became like montages of punches. But the first movie is very different. Like it's it won an Academy Award for Best Picture. It's not. It's like a it's like a soulful movie about love and searching for your place in the world. Well, and and seeing all the previews for Creed, like I want to see Creed. I still haven't seen it, but Creed is a movie. I was like, wow, this is a boxing movie that I want to see. I and think like, Trip cried well, when he watched that movie. I didn't quite cry, but I did get a little for Clem. But I'm a I'm a Rocky fan. Like I like I saw Rocky when I was very young. I've seen all the movies except part five. Like I I I like that character a lot, and it gets to a nice yeah. That's what I've heard. It's it's the perfect way to do that nostalgia reboot movie where you honor the original one, but you make clearly your own thing. And there's like a few little, you know, glimpses of the thing that you remember from the other movie, but mostly it's his own thing. But there's this one really poignant scene. That's like a direct callback to Apollo Creed that I was like, well, that was done as perfectly as possible. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, it's, you know, I, I will shame no one for crying during anything because so I don't know if it's because I'm in my thirties now or because I have children, but, uh, uh, I cry at the drop of a hat for everything now. Like I, I literally the, the f- uh, first uh, reboot of the Muppets movie with uh, uh, Jason Siegel. Or yeah. Segal, yeah. Right? Oh, of course. I <laughs> weeping city. I, Wait, what okay. part did you cry during? I don't remember the weepy part of Muppets. <laughs> I cried oh, during the, where Kermit sings the really sad song. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, unless maybe this is part of it. I haven't seen it in a while. At the very end, Kermit like has like this emotional like speech, like uh, like to get the gang back together, or just say, "Hey, we we did our best." Or I, I forget what the speech was about because I have only seen that movie once. Uh, but it was in theater with uh, my my then pregnant fiance. Uh, I don't think I think that was my first kid, so it wasn't. We didn't even have a kid in life yet. But um, I at the end of the movie, when Kermit's giving his his monologue, I sat there and started tearing up, and <laughs> and and my fiance was like, "Are you crying during the Muppets?" <laughs> and I was like, "No." Can I blow up your spot? Yeah, Andrew? yeah. Oh, which one? Um, the 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 one at the beach this year. Oh yeah, I was gonna say which movie, which <laughs> okay, which okay, Andrew okay. cries at a movie let, story let tell, are we gonna tell? Because the, there's a me. catalog of them. This one is special to me, so I would like to tell it if it's okay with you. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I'm not gonna say the movie until the end because I think it's better. So Andrew and I went to see a superhero movie this summer, and it's a long movie. And I was like getting to the point of like, boy, all I can think about is how much I have to pee. Because it's two hours into this movie. And then we get to the big climactic showdown scene, which happens in literally every one of these movies. Except this time, it's Tony Stark versus Captain America. Okay. And did you see it? 
Yes. Okay, I was going to say, this is going to ruin the end of this movie for you if you have it. Spoiler alert. Uh, he jams his shield into Tony Stark's, like, battery pack in his chest, and he, like, twists it, and Tony Stark, like, slumps, and he's obviously not dead, but he can't fight back anymore. And he's like, he's my friend, Tony. And Tony's like, yeah, I was too. And I hear, like... <laughs> And I'm like, that can't possibly be. And like Tony goes and he picks up the Winter Soldier. At that point, it's like, <laughs> and I look over and he is like weeping, like just under an ugly snarfly cry of just like tears rolling down his face. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Is it okay to swear on the show? I hope it is. Oh, I, already totally. swore. <laughs> I, was, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And he's like, it's about friendship. <laughs> and it's like full on crying and I just was like I I couldn't focus for the rest of the movie I don't remember the end of the movie because all I could think about was like my brother is weeping at Captain America Winter, <laughs> Winter Civil War excuse me he's weeping at the end of Captain America 3 like weeping <laughs> like I have to reevaluate my whole life because it was about friendship <laughs> But, oh, like, but like a couple of years before that, Toy Story three came out, oh. and I've already talked about uh, you know our, our our dad being a hardened, uh, basically a war guy, even though he has no military experience. Uh, I we all purposely like didn't read anything about Toy Story, so the only thing that I went into that movie knowing was like extremely well reviewed, and a friend of mine who I you know trust his movie opinion was like it's much darker than you think it's going to be, and I was like all right. So we get to, we're in there at Toy Story and we get to the, and I had told my family, it's like, uh, Nate, you know, my buddy's like, Hey, it's, it's much darker than you think it's going to be. I'm like, Oh, okay. And we get to the part where like the toys all hold hands as they're about to go yeah. into that furnace. Yeah, and yeah. like, we just go like oh, the whole family's having a cry. You yeah, know, yeah, we're all yeah. just like, oh, oh my God, they can't pop. Like, I was like, this is a children's movie. <laughs> you can't do this. And so they like, I'm they, never going to meet Woody in the parks again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, they're going to have Woody in the park with like the jaws fire damage where his like face is all singed and buzzes plexiglass helmets all, you know, frosted over. But like they get out of that situation. I was like, oh, okay. That was the dark part. And then it gets to the end where he's like giving away his toys. And I'm just like, oh, oh God. Yeah. And it wasn't and it was until like... he got to Woody and he goes, and he's the best friend you'll ever have. And he'll and never just... leave you. And it was just like, <laughs> boom, tears. Yep. And even our dad was crying, like not as hard as the, the three of us. But I was like ugly crying. Like I had snot <laughs> and stuff. Like I, I was wiping my face. And there's like small children turning around at like the fat man being obscene. And I was just like, <laughs> and then, the, you know, the nerd comes out. I was like, you're going to regret that so hard, kid. You're going to want that back. <laughs> you're going to want that toy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I must... Uh, Toy Story 3, uh, I think that was probably the one of the first movies I cried at before I had kids uh, because that is such a uh, such an emotional ride of a movie and so much like not expecting any of the adult themed darkness to it. No, no. Uh, but I, I will say that Civil War, I uh, I cried at during like the beginning because um, and it was there were tears of joy because that was uh, a movie that like I kind of dreamed of like about 10 years ago when the first civil war storyline came out in the comic book, that comic book is what helped bring me back into reading comics and the superhero fantasy. Cause much like every dopey teenager of the, like the late nineties, early two thousands, you know, I, it was too, I was too cool for comic books when right. I hit high school. Um, so like between that and the walking dead, like I was back into reading comics in my early twenties. So, and I said, Oh man, could you, imagine this as a, a movie like everyone in one movie they'll never do anything like this and like yeah. eventually obviously the MCU was born but it was the fact that like civil war was happening and I'm like even though it's not what that comic book was uh, I, the, the only thing I can equate it to was as much as I was really happy about the new Star Wars movie coming out um, I would imagine fans that watch the original in theaters as, as kids or, or, or young adults or whatever, they probably felt so happy to see like Han Solo and Chewie and all those characters back. 
that's what civil war was for me it was my star wars moment i was like oh my god like this is ha- like i can't believe this is happening and i had i didn't cry at the end of it with about the friendship but i i could i could see why like i will again i'm not gonna fault anyone for crying during anything because i will cry at a lot of things too you name a movie but- and i'll tell you where in that movie i cried i'll give you the time stamp uh, <laughs> winter soldier <laughs> winter soldier oh, i no. don't know if i did I was going to say, that's not, you can't, that's just, that's too good of a movie to cry at. Like that's, uh, so have you guys seen, um, I haven't, have you guys seen Batman versus Superman? Not at all. I have, I, not, not if you paid me. Okay. Well, I, I I, if you paid me, I'd go. It uh, would have to be a lot of money. That movie is two hours and 40 minutes long. Well, I am going to willingly check out the the Ultimate Edition DVD. You're a brave man. Because, I, I mean, I'm a huge Ben Affleck fan, like going back to crying like i'll watch chasing amy uh just to like if i need to cry for whatever reason i'll watch chasing amy and i'll cry during his monologue every single time and i've seen that movie it's my favorite kevin smith movie so i've seen it a lot yeah uh and uh and i've always liked him since chasing amy so like everything i've seen him in i'm just a fan of um and so to have him as batman who is probably my favorite adult comic book hero at this point like you like you had you had that ticket sold <laughs> and, and I, maybe it's partially because man of steel was awful okay i was gonna uh, ask if you saw that <laughs> yeah i wasn't a fan of it uh you know it, that movie it, like it, it wasn't superman and like i get that you're trying to do something different but and i'd have no problem with people taking liberties and and taking like putting their spin on a on a superhero character but but superman would not let his father die <laughs> he uh, would not break if, if you want to talk about man of steel we can talk about man of steel because that is a movie that i aggressively hate, hate a, with a passion and i just it i don't even like superman and i think that movie is atrocious it's it's not great like it's that I, scene that scene you just brought up where clark can't yeah. lets his dad run into a fucking tornado to save a dog is the stupidest scene in the history of cinema it's it would never happen like hey i i love my dogs dearly but if i knew there was a chance that i was gonna die i pr- and i have kids like i don't think i would risk my life or for the maybe- dogs or maybe send the intergalactic alien <laughs> yeah. that can run the speed of light to pick up the dog and return and, before and, anyone notices what happened. Exactly. In terms of that world where your son can run fast, like, come on. Like, and I really, I, I think one of the best, best Jonathan Kent's we've had is in Smallville. Like, he was kind of that guy where he's like, oh, you should be careful because you don't want people to do, see what you do. But at the same time, like, he's like, well, I mean, you got to save the kids on the school bus. Like, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank you. Yes. Like <laughs> the scene where he says that Superman should have let a bus full of school children drown was where I checked out of that movie and started fast forward into the fight bits. It, and, and I mean, he doesn't. And Superman went, even if it's it's he's got that Batman issue where he would not break his greatest enemy's neck. Like, come, oh, it, so many things that were not superman like for me it was more about, like aside from it being a bad movie it was just a like you didn't treat the character the way he should have been treated like i suppose like batman has guns in the new this batman versus superman not supposedly movie. he murders like 50 people okay. yeah I like, lo- we looked up a thing that was like a we, kill count we, we watched and like video. half of them were gunshots to the head there is wow. literally there is literally a sequence in this movie, and I'm not really spoiling anything for you, but there is literally a sequence in this movie where Batman uses a harpoon gun to launch a car on a string and crushes a person's head, and it like pops like a watermelon and sprays blood on the wall. Holy like, shit. yes, and he like he like literally as he's like he like eyes up this car, shoots it with a grappling hook, like locks the thing in, and the car like whips around and kills the guy who's shooting at him, like. Like doesn't kill. I'm sorry. Like bag of soups, the guy. <laughs> you know <Yeah>. that's <laughs> that's one of our that's one of our dumb running jokes. But like he turns into a bag of soup. It just <laughs> red gravy everywhere. And like that's my biggest concern for Suicide Squad. Among all the other concerns I have for Suicide Squad as an awful movie, is that Harley Quinn is like one of my favorite characters ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And I, 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 Margot Ro- Robbie is an amazingly talented actress. I think she's going to do it great. But like, I'm so nervous that it's just going to be shit all over everything. I saw that first picture of Jared Leto with uh, disturbed or broken or whatever uh, dumb damaged. word from Hot Topic they put on his forehead. And I was like, yep, that's garbage. Well, sa- so save for the Joker. Um, I-, I was actually just talking to one of my buddies about the Suicide Squad movie. And like, we have a feeling it could be their Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, I, I, I mean, they marketed it much better than Batman versus Superman because I'm going to go see that movie. <laughs> like. <laughs> The thing, I, I, the thing that I think separates, and I hope it's a good movie because you're going. So I hope that you have a wonderful time that doesn't suck. Like I hope all movies don't suck. I don't actively root for movies to be bad. But the thing that I am afraid of is that there's nothing insane, silly, fun about the Suicide Squad. Where like Guardians of the Galaxy is kind of ridiculous yeah. on its face, and that's what made it wonderful. Like I, we talked about my old podcast already. My buddy and I, one of the like pop uh, pop culture discussions we talked about and this is like three years ago so we're early into the mcu was like me reading the description of guardians of the galaxy when it was just like it had been announced and i was like literally one of the characters is called rocket raccoon (laughs) and it's just they were high and thought it was funny listening to the beatles like that's the actual origins of that character and i was like and its best friend is a tree monster and like cut to speak (laughs) <laughs> it has three words cut to three years later we are Groot and i'm getting sniffly and teary-eyed in the te- theater you know yeah. <laughs> so it's like like it can be done but i just i i have zero faith after seeing man of steel and then the ad campaign for batman versus super versus superman yeah well and then they were like oh we're re after deadpool was a success they're like we're gonna recut the entire movie and reshoot everything and i was like yeah well fuck <laughs> I'm glad I dressed up as Harley Quinn before the movie came out because I'm not going to do it after. Suddenly, Harley Quinn's like looking to Cameron, being like, "Look at this asshole!" <laughs> doing it, doing it like a, do a Jim Halpert eye roll. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I have faith for that movie. Like, I think that, uh, and honestly, like at this point, I think this is going to be the movie now that makes or breaks that DCU because. I, I mean, I guess it made money, but you you already had a huge misstep. I, I had, I mean, from what I've heard, we're we're gonna luck out with the solo Batman movies because appar- apparently he was the best part of B- Batman versus Superman. But Suicide Squad could make or break the DCU. I think so. Yeah. If it doesn't make money, they're going to be in trouble because it's funny to talk about Batman versus versus. I can't say versus tonight. The- Batman versus that's stupid, man. The the the. The thing that's weird about it is it was unsuccessful because it didn't make a billion dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like that's, that is literally the measure of success of a superhero movie. If it's cost more than X, it has to make a billion dollars or it's not worth it. And it didn't. And so it's like, oh, it made $800 million worldwide and it's considered a flop because everybody (laughs) hated it. And so they didn't go see it three times. And it's, it's like you asked us about the origins of of our thing. And this is kind of tangentially tied to that is like, as a big giant movie nerd, I'm sorry for losing everybody on this, but in the eighties, there was this like middle ground on movies where stuff could cost like between, like you could have a small movie and you could have a big movie and you could have sort of an in-between movie. And now we movie, if you will. Yeah. Like, you know, but we don't really have them anymore. Like there's no $45 million to $60 million movies. It's either under 15 generally or under 20 or like 180. And so like, you can't just do like, oh, we're going to give Squirrel Girl $45 million and see what the hell happens. Oh, they should. So, and they I should would watch do. the hell out of that movie. Right. And, like, and you sold my ticket already by going, yeah, we're going to do Squirrel Girl. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm already in and you could make it like Deadpool yeah. is a perfect example of a movie that costs like $60 million and or, made a I bunch don't know, of money. Wonder because, Woman? <laughs> well, Wonder Woman. Like I'd like to Wonder see, Woman. I'd like to see Wonder Woman get a big budget, but that's already happening, apparently. But, like, we just don't have that middle movie anymore. And so, like, Deadpool is a great example of you can make a cool, fun thing for a small amount of money and make a big, fat chunk. But they only want to commit, like, they're only willing to commit to a $200 million movie and hope that it makes a billion. It's it's very – the business has been – kind of shifted that way. It's it's kind of fascinating to watch, but also not necessarily the best thing for movie consumers. 
And that's my fear for Deadpool 2 is that, okay, we had such huge success. Let's pump a lot of money into it yeah. and make it even better. And like, I, 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 the Fox is going to ruin that movie. Like, it's not, I don't think it's going to be Tim Miller or Ryan Reynolds or anyone else that was involved with the first one. It's going to be the, the studio. Did well, because Ryan that? Reynolds is like, all about that character's history and it's like I want to bring Spider-Man in and I want to have a gay relationship with Spider-Man <laughs> so like he's not going to ruin shit it's going to be Fox being like nah the the yeah. one the one reason I hold out hope is did you see um 22 Jump Street yes okay so no wait 22 I don't know I don't think I saw 22 no I saw okay. 21 so the sequel to that was about how dumb sequels are okay. and it was awesome like it was just uh, great and that, that wasn't fox but like i'm like it would be great to me if they were like okay the deadpool movie has a hundred million dollar budget like i'd bet there's a scene in it where deadpool is literally lying on a bed made of money <laughs> i and you know, you're, you're right if they if they pull the card of like let's uh make fun of sequel movies a sequel superhero movies specifically yeah. yes you're right yeah they, they could win big time with that like i i'm literally seeing the ad campaign of like it's deadpool with a plate of sushi and uh the chopsticks are gold and he's <laughs> literally laying on it like a breaking bad sized bed made of money with uh oh, what's that actress's name i just forgot her the 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 female in that movie uh elizabeth shoe <laughs> no what the hell's her name i can't want to say carla gugino that's so very very wrong uh, uh oh uh marina, uh, marina Baccarin? Yes, yes 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 okay she's awesome in the movie but like i could totally see her like fanning him with a palm frond and he's like <laughs> there with like a plate of sushi made out of gold and and like i you know like all of that i'm into it like i i have faith that the people who are creatively behind that will be able to fight back a little but you are totally right that they're going to try to ruin it they're going to be like all right here's nine villains he has to fight like no just the one here's a giant yeah. spider <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You made the, you picked the perfect person to drop that reference off. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the giant spider. I love it. Um, yeah, no, I, I I actually today, speaking of horrible superhero movies, I, and I we had, we turned it off because my kid was starting to watch it, and I guess, I don't know, I walked away because I had to put my daughter to bed, but my son's old enough to pay attention to movies. It was Fantastic Four, the, the reboot. Ugh. <laughs> And I want to oh, watch the, it. The one that so came bad. out last year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I want to watch it. Cause it's so bad. Uh, and as I was actually a fan of the first two, like I, I didn't mind the, the, the ones with, uh, Jessica Alba and whoever else was in it. Chris uh, Evans. Chris Evans. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't mind the ones with Captain America in it. Like, I think it was great. Like I, well, not, not great. I, great's the wrong word. But <laughs> they were good. Uh, okay it, they were good yeah i i so there's three tiers well uh, i guess i may have to adjust this at some point but before like the mcu or like when the mcu just started i had three tiers for superhero movies there was like the really really good ones like iron man and uh spider-man 2 and stuff like that then there was the middle ground which was pretty much everything else and then there was the low ground which was at the time ang lee's hulk like i hated that like I don't hate any movie more than I hate Ang Lee's Hulk. <laughs> uh, and and that was the only movie to ever stoop that low, except for maybe, I guess, now the rebooted Fantastic Four. Or Howard the Duck. Oh, I <laughs> now I wouldn't put that in my top tier. I've watched <laughs> that, but I've watched that movie at least once, and when's I would watch it again. Time, when's the last time you watched that movie? Uh, whatever it was on Netflix, like a couple of years ago. Okay, because <laughs> like, yeah, those kids. dead eyes do a lot more than you think they do. <laughs> they are deeply upsetting to watch. Uh, I'll have to watch. I- I'm gonna have to watch it again because it's like I- seeing. Like, have you ever seen pictures of like when Disney World first opened and what the characters looked like? Yes, yes. It's yes. like their nightmares. <laughs> Howard uh, the Duck, I think, might have been the origins of our discussions of like, what on earth? Like, how was there no process to check this? Where George Lucas was like, uh, one of the characters is going to be uh, a lady duck and we're going to see your lady duck breasts. And nobody was like, uh, yeah, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, sir. Sorry. I know you made Star Wars, but That's no. our favorite joke is like, <laughs> People think like, oh, movies just happen. But like, no, someone made up a, a concept, then someone wrote a story, then someone cast it, then someone directed it, then someone edited it, then someone put it in post, and then someone marketed it, and then we watched it. Like, there's a lot of steps. 
everything you see in a movie, 12 people had to approve. If at, not at more. Least, at least. So, like, every time you see something that doesn't make sense, you just have to remember that, like, 12 people said, yep, that's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I mean, Sword that... and Coke. They were like, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is amazing that uh, that a lot of shit movies get put out but hey i mean that gives future uh, generations to do dissecting the the aughts yeah Yeah, exactly Uh, so i mean uh it's all full circle i guess um all right so i think it's uh i'm getting a little sleepy we're all east coasters it's past midnight Mm -hmm. yeah um i think it's time to say good night uh besides the your show that's happening next week at 5 p.m at tattooed moms uh on august 28th what, do you have anything else that you want to plug throughout or throughout your social media plugs and your website and whatnot? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, we're every other week, every other Monday. Uh, it's dissecting the 80s.com, facebook.com slash dissecting the 80s. On Twitter, it's slightly different. It's dissectomania, which is a uh, character limit problem, but I'm really active on all the social media stuff. And what's the Instagram one? Uh, just dissecting the 80s. Okay. Uh, so or you can follow also- me, I guess, Andrew Dean Lano. I'll throw myself out there. <laughs> I I do all my social mediaing through the show at this point. So if you want to catch me on Twitter, it's um, I'm the guy behind Dissectomania. All right, very. And where uh, besides, uh, I guess iTunes. Where where did you say where you can they can find the show? It, pretty much any podcast app at this point. Okay. Uh, we're yeah, we're on Google Play, we're uh, Stitcher, iTunes. Uh, if you throw us a review on iTunes, we read it on the air. We're doing that for the first hundred, and we've got. Uh, not a hundred yet. So uh, if you do if you do review the show, we will read it on the air. We always implore people. Oh, to do which that. which does remind me, I promised people I would do that, and uh, a couple of days ago we got almost a month ago, almost a month ago we got one. So I should I'm gonna I'm gonna do it live instead of in a in a uh, commercial. I just have to pull it up. So I'm gonna kill some time here uh, talking about that. Um, yeah, I don't. It's uh, it's something that I promised, and I didn't think people would review. So I just never check. And I checked for the first time the other day and I was like, holy crap, someone reviewed it. But so I've reviewed my own show, by the way. <laughs> oh, we did too. <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, yeah. The president votes for himself. Yeah. Obviously. Or herself. Yeah. If, uh, whatever. So, I'm not trying to be sexist. So Themself. the first first review is uh, from Silent Kev, a.k.a. me. <laughs> uh, so That's a great show. Love the style of the interview. It's great to get to know the guest on a more intimate level than I quick guest spot that's pretty spot on um okay photo rain uh left a uh review uh just about uh, on june 29th totally worth it listen love it it's totally worth it everything is awesome in this podcast uh so thank you photo rain for um for for shouting us out on leaving a five-star review on itunes uh much like if, while you're on itunes leaving reviews for dissecting the 80s uh, i highly recommend you subscribe to their podcast and then come over to my show subscribe to us and leave a five-star review i keep forgetting to remind people to do that uh and if you do i'll read it on the show uh, if you leave a one-star review i will not so uh oh, don't do we'll that. read any star we, we don't have that caveat you can tell us we're a bunch of nerdy assholes the only thing we won't read is hate about. speech. Yeah, we our rule is no uh, hate speech. <laughs> Anything else goes. You don't even have to be nice to I, us, but review the show. I'll tell you what. I I'll read a one star review as long as you rate it five stars. Like rate it five stars and tell me I'm awful. That's all. <laughs> I, that's fine. That's, I'm okay with that. Uh, just don't just don't like ruin. I got a, a pretty good record. Now. That's two for two five. Uh, so don't ruin that record, people. Um, and. Uh, so yeah, um, I don't now know. you have three. Oh sweet, awesome! Thank you, mystery person that left that third review. <laughs> oh, uh, the name of our review is dissecting the eighties. It's going to be pretty <laughs> obvious who left it. Oh, the name of my iTunes account is that, so it's going to be pretty straightforward to figure it out. I actually, I think mine used to be HHWST, which if you want to follow me on Twitter, my personal Twitter is at HHWST. Um, I had that as my Twitter because that was the original, my original podcast was Happy Hour with Steel Tip, HHWST. And, um, and I felt like, well, I can't leave a review for a Happy Hour podcast as Happy Hour. So I want to change it to Silent Kev. No one will know. Uh, <laughs> except for now when I announce it to everyone that listens to the show. Um, all three of them. Uh, so the podcast, I'm sorry. I know we're going to bed, but yeah. did you do the podcast in character as Steel Tip? 
Uh, no, sometimes. Um, <laughs> it, it depended on what we were doing. Like, so there were, uh, if we were interviewing other guys from the wrestling league yeah. federation, whatever you want to call it, then totally. Uh, and sometimes, depending on the guest, if they if they were into it, we, we would play around like that, like that. But for like the general segments and whatnot, uh, no, I just did it as, as me. Uh, though, I mean, it was more like in my twenties, I was a shock jockey person. Like, I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it was really a, a different radio show. Like almost like I'm kind. I don't think anyone can find it on the internet. Like I think it's been like, I I, I mean it's buried if it's there. I can't even find it on the internet. Uh, it is kind of like almost embarrassing how shock jockey it was. Like it's so, it's so not my humor anymore. And like, yeah. uh, so it's 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 nothing I really enjoy now. Uh, so I'm glad it's buried and no one can find it. And and I mean, it, I mean, it would ruin my future political career. <laughs> uh, well, we all know you got to protect that. That's yeah. A, that's I mean, important it, thing out there. I don't plan on having one, but it, and you never know. You never know what happens post zombie apocalypse. Got to uh, leave those doors open, man. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, now I I think of myself as a, a sophisticated podcaster. Now um, <clears throat> I'm not. Uh, but I, like to I think mean, it. we're not, but we, yeah, we are watch. hardly highbrow. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I think I ended my interview with Aaron McGathy by saying, if you ever want to slum it with, the, with this podcast again, let me know and, and we'll totally have you on again. Uh, and I think that's when I got blocked. <laughs> uh side note she did not block me i don't want to start that rumor. Okay, no, she's it's, it's i don't know if you guys have ever talked to like people that you admire and whatever uh, i've always feared it because, i try and like, avoid it yeah because like what if they're assholes mm-hmm. uh, so i used to do like media interviews in college i worked for the entertainment section of the paper so i got to interview a lot of people uh, and I'm not going to say this person's name because that's terrible, but I once interviewed a person who didn't know what the difference between fiction and nonfiction was. <sighs> like I asked a question and I was like, hey, this movie, you're playing this non, you know, this nonfiction role. And then it just got announced that you're playing this, you know, this other movie just got announced and you're playing a very obviously fictional role. Is there a difference in preparing? And the person like looked at me for a second and like contemplated and was like what is fiction? And I was like, oh man, we're going to get like an esoteric, like, you know, arty person answer. I'm so excited for what this person has to say. And there was like a beat. And then there was another beat. And then at the third beat, I was like, oh shit, the person I'm talking to doesn't know the difference between fiction and nonfiction. And I had to go, well, fiction is not real. And nonfiction is like the movie you were just in to a grown ass professional actor. This person you had to was define like, a word. This person was well old enough to know this. This was not a child actor. And I was just like, you literally met the whole family of a person or some members of a family of a person who you played a character based on them and you don't know the difference between those words. <laughs> oh, God. I'm totally – once I hit stop, I'm totally – Yeah, I will, t- I, will t- I will absolutely tell you yeah, off I don't air. remember this story, so. Yeah, I, w- I will totally tell you off air, but I don't, I don't want to uh, do that with a person that, that, Fair in, enough. in the world. But I, I'm pleased to say that, like, sitting down and talking to Aaron McGathy was, like, the total, like, win because, like, I did – she was not an asshole at all. And like, I think it's even in the episode. She said, if I ever come to Ireland, hit her up and she'll like show me around. So like, <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Totally cool. Per- I highly that. I don't know how good the episode is to me. It's, it's right now my favorite, but I'm still kind of riding that high. Uh, to I, I interviewed uh, Mick Foley for an article. <gasps> here, uh, like two, I knew you would be, I, you, it, you yeah. talking about it. Remain, I was like, I have to share this. And so uh, this is real quick. And then I promise I will shut up until the show is over. Uh, but I had like four really good questions I wanted to ask him. And I got so starstruck. And so like, don't turn into the Chris Farley show. Don't turn into the Chris Farley show. Don't turn into the Chris Farley show that I like forgot these four questions I really wanted to ask. Just like basic stuff, but like, Hey, tell me a great Vince McMahon story. Cause like yeah. I can never get enough of that. And he was really kind and gracious. And we talked for like 20 minutes and I was like, I'm going to have to let you go. And I was like struggling to remember these questions. I was like, I'm going to have to let you go, but thank you for being so nice to me and talking to me for like 25 minutes. And you definitely did not have to do that. Uh, so sometimes it works out. You never yeah. know. Yeah, and and I feel like at least with Kevin Smith, when if that ever happens, it's going to be the same deal because he doesn't want to live a story like how he tells about Bruce Willis. So, right, right, right. So he doesn't want to have to live that. So. When it happens, man, think positive. I have faith yeah. in you. 
Yeah. No. Yeah. It's it's gonna have uh, the and officially after I talk to him and to Aisha Tyler, there is no purpose to this podcast. I can <laughs> shut it, it down. Up. Yeah, <laughs> pack it up, shut it down, and and boom, I'm done. Uh, now I see. I started this show uh, basically just to. I mean, it's quite obvious. I like to talk. Uh, I to talk to people and like just tell. Like, it's to me a conversation podcast, not a long form interview podcast, uh, and. I just like uh, I, it, I the way I was finally able to word it right was after listening to um, Jeff Stormer and Party One say the reason he started his podcast was so he could play games with people, and the reason I started this podcast is just so I can talk to new and interesting people. Like I will talk, I and anyone that's out there listening, if you want to sit around and talk for an hour about nothing, like come on the show. Uh, I will literally talk to anybody. You don't have to be part of a podcast or an actor or an entertainer in any uh, shape or form. Like I have a buddy who lives down south who he promised he promised me he'll be on the show just so we can talk southern culture like i'm fascinated that's by southern awesome. culture yeah that's awesome yeah so yeah I'm so that's playing a, a southern girl right now i love southern culture <laughs> it's uh i it, it's i mean the southern culture i'm probably referring to as much might be a little different because like he told me about this town once in uh in, in alabama that it, like literally it says like on your way out or your way in like if you're colored be out by 6 p.m and i'm like wait it's 2016 or at the time it's like 2010 like this there's no way that racism still occurs he's like oh buddy in alabama it does i'm like holy shit that is hard it's a whole different place <laughs> it, it's yeah so like it just like that kind of crap fascinates me um so anyway uh again thank you guys for being on the show make sure you check out their podcast uh dissecting the 80s if you have a time machine go back to august uh 6th is it august 6th august 6th if you have a time machine go back and watch the show live as part of the baltimore podcast festival. festival uh i wish i i, I that's i'm just starting to get into like finding other podcast festivals and stuff to like be part of uh i applied to the pittsburgh one that i've Me heard too. yeah they haven't said anything since march so i have no idea what's going on but they yeah yeah, yeah. i have no idea either yeah, uh, but now I know for next year I uh, to try to get into the Baltimore Con one or Baltimore not Baltimore Con Baltimore Podcast Fest. God damn, all these festivals and cons they get <laughs> they blend. Uh, but for sure, if you don't have a time machine, check them out August twenty eighth, five p.m. at Tattoo Moms in Philadelphia on South Street. Uh, it's going to be a good time. You know how good it is because you were there last week to watch my show. So you know how great Tattooed Moms is. Come hear us make jokes about Tom Cruise and possibly get threatened by the Scientologists of America. Oh, but also God. make a lot of gay jokes. Yeah. Also <laughs> Which that, is okay. So I can do lot, that. Yeah. So many gay jokes. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks again, guys. You can find me on Twitter at HHWST. Find the show on Twitter at Real Awesome Pod. Uh, and of course, find the show on awesomepodcast.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time right here, as I said, on awesomepodcast.com.